right? So that's what the seller is wanting is money. Now, the closing is created or commenced by the title company or the settlement company. So there on page 255, 250, I can't even see, 258, probably should teach with my glasses on so I can see. On page 258, the title company is the one that will do all of this closing. Now, <clears throat> here's how this is gonna work. Let's see if we can get this. So when you list a property, you will list the property all right, right here. Typically, the listing agent will go out and find their title rep and say, look, I'm listing a property. I want you to pull a title on this property. And remember, title searches historically. Now, the problem with this is right here is we don't know who the buyer is. So you hear the term called TBD, which is to be determined because we don't know the buyer's name. Or sometimes you hear it called the preliminary title. And this is going to tell the listing agent all of the liens that are on the house they're getting ready to list. And then we get an offer And that offer then goes to close. This is that 30 days that you put time is of the essence when you write the offer. Who knows how long this is, all right? Now, when you go to close, there are several things the title company is going to do for you, all right? So right before closing, they're going to pull title work down again from here because remember they pulled it here, but now they're going to check the date one more time from the day of closing back to the original day they pulled the preliminary title. That has the term that is called a bring down. They are bringing down that title work, that preliminary title work to the date of closing. All right. So that's one of the things the uh, title company will do. Now, the other thing they do is they're going to figure out how much in real estate taxes is owed by the seller. That is why we need this date of closing. So we know exactly what date that the seller and the buyer are going to transfer the property because the seller is liable for the taxes up to that date. Another thing that they're going to do is get the seller's payoff. All right. The seller has a loan on the property, probably. Maybe it's free and clear, but probably has a loan. So the title company is going to seek what is called a mortgage reduction certificate, meaning what is the payoff value on that March 1 date. And that number is going to be some weird number because it's exactly to the penny. The seller owes $123,418.56 on that date, all right? That's how much the title company will know to send to pay off the seller's current mortgage. Thumbs up. So they're going to seek that payoff. The other thing that they're going to seek right here is called a seller's affidavit. And I don't know if I can spell affidavit. 
In Indiana, we call this, uh, sure we do. I just lost it completely. Um, seller, doesn't matter. <clears throat> so follow me for a minute. Is it possible that the seller, the day before closing, goes out and borrows money and uses the house as a lien, but because of the delay in recording, it won't show up till way over here. Get it? Is that possible? Can you say that one more time? All right. Could the seller, the day before closing, go out and encumber his house with another loan. He could use it as collateral for anything. And because of the actual human delay in recording, it won't show up in the records until two or three weeks later. Is that possible? By the way, the sellers call it, Indiana calls it the affidavit of title. Yes. All right. So what this affidavit says, under perjury of law, that the seller has not done anything to the property that everybody doesn't know about already. So the seller is saying, I haven't done anything sneaky or tricky to put a lien on the property. You know about my fifth third mortgage, it showed up in the title work. You know about my American Express lien, it showed up in the title work. But I'm telling you that I haven't done anything else that would encumber my property under perjury of law. Questions? So you're saying that the seller could essentially go out and get another um, encumbrance on the property if they haven't signed an aff or if they haven't obtained an affidavit title. But if they got the this, affidavit is saying they didn't do that. Oh, the affidavit is saying they didn't do that. Yes. Okay. Because in the real world, they could have done that. They could have. <clears throat> Suppose they had a court case and the judge sends them to a judgment against their person. Mm -hmm. That could, in essence, put a lien. Remember the Liz Pendens? Could put a lien on the property. Well, that's going to be a problem for the new owner because his lender is now not first because that, app, that lien that the previous owner, i.e. the seller, got would be recorded first. So the new buyer's loan comes in thinking they were first, but they're actually second. Right, okay. Got it? Yeah. So what this affidavit says is the seller is declaring under a rule of law that I have done nothing that you don't know about to encumber my property. That's what this seller's affidavit, he will sign this at the closing table so that that also gives the buyer some peace of mind to go, look, we've got the payoff, we've got the lien, we've got the receipt for the American Express. I want to make sure you didn't do something you're not telling me about. And the seller says, okay, I'll sign this affidavit of title that says I didn't. Now, <clears throat> I have seen this happen. I sold a condo for a doctor and his wife who retired here in Indiana. They moved to Florida. They sold their condo furnished. So there was a deal for the condo and then an outside deal for all the house stuff. The wife went down and bought new stuff for their condo in Florida. All right, must be nice to have money. So they closed. And everything went fine. Seller signed his affidavit, yada, 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 yada. About two and a half months later, three months, 
I got a call from the title company and they're like, hey, Raymond, do you remember the blah, blah, blah closing? I'm like, mm, not really. Being honest. They said the doctor. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I remember. He goes, she's, the title company says, look, we got a problem. Apparently, the credit card that the wife used to buy all of the furniture for the new condo was on an opened in loan attached to the house. So when she bought the furniture on credit, it actually put that other lien on the house. It did exactly what I'm telling you can happen. So when the new owner went to pay his first mortgage payment, they found out, and I'm not quite sure how they did, but they found out that his lender was in fact second lien because the wife's open in credit card purchase popped up as first lien still on the property. And the title company says, we got a problem. We need to clear this lien today because your seller signed this affidavit and he actually perjured himself because they did do something. So I had to call the doctor and explain it to him. And I honestly think it was a mistake because they were in their seventies and she probably had carried the card so long she forgot. But here's the key, he had to wire $63,000 that day to pay that lien off. Or the title company was going to press this further. And I called him, I'm like, dude, you gotta pay this off like today. And he's like, okay, how much? I said 63,000. He's like, okay, I'll wire the money. So he literally wired the money to the title company and paid that lien off which in essence, whoop, now the new owner's second lien slid up to where it was supposed to be. But he literally wrote a check for 63 grand that day. And ironically, I did not hear anything in the newspaper about a doctor strangling his wife. So I think everything went fine. All right. So that's what the title company is going to do. Now, let me show you something else. There is a second way to order title. Some agents wait till they get an offer and then order title work. Now all the else, same plays true. The day of closing, they will do the title work again. It is still called a bring down here and they still will, title company still does all this. So there are typically or technically two ways. The listing agent can order the title the day they list it, or they can wait until the offer and then order title work, all right? Both are acceptable, but here's the problem. Both are wrong or right. There are problems with both of these, and we'll see this today. If you wait until you get an offer, it is potentially possible that the offer you got doesn't clear the liens because the seller was not aware of all the liens he had on his property. We had this happen. He, he said, I owe 101,000. So we did that math and we figured out we could take 110. We took 110 took an offer for 110, accepted it, pulled the title work and found out that his $101,000 payoff was actually 102,300 because he had accrued late fees on the house payments he hadn't made. So in essence, we did not get enough money to pay off the mortgage company. By the time we paid the real estate commission, by the time we paid the closing fees, it would turned out to be just like that example that we worked where he owed 102.3 and we only had like 101.6. He actually had to bring money to the table. Now we would have found that out if I'd have pulled the lit, uh, title work 
the day I listed it, I'd have been able to say, hey, dude, you've got other liens. Are we sure we're listing for enough money? All right. 